Hello, my name is Victor Borges from DNVGL Software and this video is an extension of the maintenance modeling video and what we're going to do today is just kind of a look into uh, different types of maintenance strategy, right? So if you uh, refer to the building up your model in six steps and the maintenance modeling video, you're going to get to the same point where we are now and you can take the model from there. If you if you're starting from now, uh, so just let's just go through some of the main uh, you know features in this model, right? So we have the simulator parameters, uh, system life for ten years, the starting date two thousand twenty. We are running for a hundred simulations. Uh, we are producing oil, failure data in years, and repair data in hours, right? We have two wells, right? This is this is going to be important for us now, and we have a production platform, right? Um, so each one that I was contributing with uh, 100,000 barrels of production. So if we go to the flow grid, so each one can produce 100,000 barrels, right? Uh, meaning that if I lose well one, I lose 50% of production. If I lose well two, I lose 50% of production. If uh, production platform shuts down, we have 100% of production loss. Uh, within the production platform, we have a system called unplanned shutdown. So at this level, we have two pumps, two by 50%, and we have a heat exchanger. And when I go to view equipment grids, I can see all the failure modes I have defined here, which uh, uh, the pumps likely to fail every six months and the heat exchanger likely to fail every two years pumps take 12 hours to fix it and the um, heat exchanger takes 24 hours to fix it. Uh, if we look at the maintenance profile, we have the pump there and in order to fix the pumps, uh, we need the crew and we need a spare pump, right? And when it comes to the heat exchanger, we need the crew again, but also the uh, spare parts for the heat exchanger right so so this is the current model we have and what we're going to do now we're going to explore different um maintenance strategies right so so let's let's start from the well failures right so at the moment the, we haven't defined any well failure right so we'll, let's do it let's first define the well failure and the strategies that we are going to try to implement here is looking at um if we have, let's say, an incipient failure and we have a critical failure, we want to wait until the critical failure happens so we can uh, perform the repair task, right? So we don't want to send like an ROV or a, a diver to the wells uh, unless there, there is a critical failure, right? An incipient failure we can accept because it's not going to cause any production loss, but a critical failure it, we cannot accept because it's going to shut down the, the facility or sorry, it's going to shut down the wells, right? Or the well. So if you want, the first thing we need to do is define the well failure. So we can go, for example, to well one. We can define a system here and we can call it, uh, we can right click, go to properties and call it, let's say, well one failures, right? When I double click in that, I can add a new equipment item. So this is like an unplanned uh, unplanned shutdown, right? And we can double click on that and we can add a failure mode, right? So if we want to change, for instance, the, the equipment item name, we can call it, we can call it, let's say, well failures. And let's say we have two types of failure here. We have, so we need to add two rows. So we're kicking failure again. So now we have two failure modes defined for this well, right? And one of them is going to be incipient. So I can actually select from the modes list an incipient failure. So if I go to I and C, there you go. You can see the description field change it right automatically. And what, what is the definition of incipient failure? An incipient failure will not cause any production loss at failure, but will cause some production loss at the repair, right? So if I, if I click on capacity loss at failure. So that's the loss we have during the maintenance logistic stage of the failure, right? And the capacity loss at repair is the uh, loss that we have during the actual repair time, right? So we can set that, this up to zero, for example. And that pretty much means that when this uh, 
failure occurs, there won't be any shutdown. But when we fix it, there'll be a 100% shutdown, right? So let's say uh, we're running this system for 10 years. So let's say that a well failure is quite, uh, you know, unlikely to occur, right? You know, well uh, items tend to be very, very reliable, right? So we can say it happens once in the life of the uh, assets, right? So every 10 years, we should expect to see a failure, right? The incipient failure, actually, we do expect to see quite often, let's say every two years, right? Uh, if you don't go to the right, scroll to the right a bit. Um, the well failure, when it occurs, let's say it takes like, let's say five, five days to fix it, right? 120 hours. The incipient one takes, let's say, um, 60 hours, you know, all right. Okay, so after defining the repair time, uh, we had all the failure modes completely defined, right? So one of the things you can do in Maros, I can actually go up to well one, I can copy this and say, oh, the same kind of failure pattern occurs for well two, right? So if I double click on that, I can change the name to well two, and there you go, very easy, right? Very easy to define the uh, two systems with the same, um, let me just put that as well one as well. And this is well two. All right, so this kind of uh, defines the failure modes we have, right? But we haven't defined any, de any of the maintenance strategy, okay? So in order to define the maintenance strategy, one of the things we can do, we can have a, we can go to the resource view and we have two locations there, right? But in order to define this priority thing, we need to define another location and we can call it well location, right? So well location. And this is where our wells are, right? So the two wells are there, okay? So now we have three locations. The, the second one is where the production platform is and we have a warehouse. So let's assume that for, in order to repair uh, this um, well or these wells, we need an ROV, a remoted operated vehicle, right? So what we can do, we can go to the offshore production and say we need a uh, transport vessel. We can call this ROV. We can say uh, it's, it takes us, again, it might take a while, depending on the size of the ROV. If you're handling like a heavy, uh, you know, a repair involving a heavy equipment item, it, it, you need a big ROV and that's not always available, right? So let's say it can take between you know, uh, 60 hours and 72 hours to actually mobilize this ROV, right? So there you go. So now we have um, the maintenance resource we need to repair uh, failures in the wells available, right? But then we can go back now to the asset view and start defining the um, maintenance profile for this well uh, failures, right? So if I scroll to the right, uh, I have the maintenance profile column. So this is the failure mode level, right? I'm clicking on the equipment item. So if I go scroll to the right, we have the maintenance profile. So the first one is for the critical failure. So what I can do, I can say create and edit, right? And I can say, look, I need a vessel, which is in the offshore production system is an ROV. And the key difference between this and what we did before is the priority, the job priority, right? So this is the critical failure, so it's an emergency failure. So every time this happens, we wanna send something right away, right? So we can say use profiles again, and we're gonna say this is well HP, meaning high priority, right? And we can apply that and press close. The incipient failure is exactly the same uh, maintenance profile, right? So we're requiring the same resources. Okay, so if you press OK, select the one, and I can go create and edit. The main difference between these two is the priority. So for this one, we want to select level three, next crit non-critical, next opportunity. What does that do? That actually says, I'm not going to that location. If I'm not, if I'm not in that location, I'm not gonna mobilize my maintenance resources to go there. 
only when something uh, with high priority happens and my crew or my maintenance resource is already in that location, I'm gonna get this fixed, right? So this is what the level three is saying. And within the level three, you can set up another five different levels, right? So when I say I can type in a new name, let's say low priority LP, press apply and close. There you go. Now we have two maintenance profiles defined, which which uh, both of them have different priorities, right? So this is well too, right? We can simply copy this, select both cells, copy, go to L1 and paste. And there you go. The model is fully defined for this particular type of maintenance strategy. But before running the model, let's turn on some of the um, logs that we have. Let's look into the operation log and the production log, right? And just because we, you know, this is just a test model. So what we can do, we can run just for one cycle. So, uh, you know, it's a bit faster. Uh, Myers is going to warn you that some of these logs can become quite big, actually. Uh, so you got you to gotta be, be careful. So we're going to run for one cycle, test cycle, right? And I'm going to run this now. Obviously, it's a bit too fast, right? So uh, there you go. So the logs are in the results view. So we go to the results view, and there is a log folder, right? So the results view is where all the main, all the raw data is available in Myros, right? So I can expand this, and I can look into my event log, right? Uh, it's probably better to look at the production log, okay? Um, so if I look at this log, what I can see here, I can see that. For example, uh, we have a well to failure happening here, and there is no production loss. So you can see we remain. So let me just go back and show you some of the columns, right? So the first column is the number of occurrence, um, the time, then the throughput, then the event, and then the ID, right? S1, S2, S3 is they are pretty much different stages in the in the event, right? S1 means the failure has occurred. S2 may, means that uh, I have all my resources available. S3 means that um, the repair is completed, right? So you can see the three of them actually happening here, right? So a failure occurs in one of the pumps. Uh, a few hours later, we have the resources available. And a few hours later, we repair the system. So you can see the 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 throughput happening, the throughput change happening there, right? So let's look into the well failures, right? So if I look here, there is an incipient failure there, right, for the wells. Then there is another incipient failure. Oh, now there is actually a critical failure. Yes, there is a critical failure here, and then we can see the system went down for. Um, 50%, right? So so because well one failed, we have we see the system going down. Then it takes a while for us to actually mobilize the well resources, right? And what happens is that we fix this the well failures and we go back well one failures, the critical failure, and um, the repair is fu fully defined here, right? But then what happens just after is that since my ROV is there, I'm deciding to uh, fix the well two again because I already have my ROV in that location. So what happens is that we shut down the system 50% and then we repair the incipient failure, right? If I didn't want the well one failures to impact the well two, I could actually have two different locations, one for well one, and one for well two, and that would avoid you know um, the failures in well one to to trigger repairs in well two, right? Uh, this is but this is my modeling uh, decision. I decided to do that. Uh, I decided to do uh, a single location for both wells. So hopefully that was this was helpful, right? Um, if you have any questions, please do get in touch at software.support at dnvgls.com. Thank you.